Thank you. Are you afraid of sharks? Did you calculate the probability of getting attacked by one? I didn't think about that when I jumped from the back of a boat in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean into dark waters, hours from land. I was on a deep sea fishing trip with all the guys in my family and a hat blew overboard. And we stopped the boat and we watched this hat drift further away in the waves. Everyone's standing there watching it. And I decided, at 12 years old, that I was going to jump in and swim for that hat. And I did. And I didn't think about sharks, and I didn't think about any other risk. I just swam for that hat like it was a trophy. Because I wanted to show that girls could be brave. Would you jump? Would you have jumped for a hat? What would you jump for? Would you jump for happiness? Would you jump for love? Maybe a chance at great wealth or to make a difference in the world. Every day life presents us with opportunities and yet, as a society, we've gone overboard. This napkin has a warning on it. There's a drawing of an island, <laughs> and the label says not to be used for navigation. <laughs> How can we do better? How can we be aware of these cognitive forces that impact our decision-making every day? How can we have a better understanding of risk and our reaction to it so that we don't miss out on opportunity and that we don't go overboard with threat. Well, let's take a look at a few things that are impacting and influencing our thinking. So let's look first at our personality. Some very interesting research was done with fish. It's a really neat way to learn about personality is by studying animals. In this research, a shiny object was placed in a pond and the researchers observed that only some of the fish went up and explored this shiny object. The rest stayed back. Now, what's the risk of being the bold fish? You might get gobbled up. That shiny object might be a predator. So the researchers took all of the fish and put them into a new habitat and observed them again. And what do you think happened with the bold fish? How do you think they did in this new environment? They gobbled up the new food. They went and lived in all of the, the best spots to uh, be safe from predators and to mate. The bold fish did very well. And how did the shy fish do? The shy fish, unfortunately, missed out on the food. They didn't find the very good places to live and to mate. And in fact, many of them were paralyzed by fear. And they were eaten. Now, what's our lesson in this? We're not fish, <laughs> right? But what we can learn is that empirically, at least for fish anyways, being a bold fish is, is, a, better, is a better personality choice. But for us, even when we're shy, we are not constrained to our personality. We can move out of our comfort zone to take on these different challenges. At BE Works, we did an interesting series of experiments where we looked at how people are influenced by their environment. You would think in the domain of personal finance and retirement planning that we would know what our risk appetite is. But we revealed, in fact, we don't have a good hold on that. We presented investors with four model portfolios and saw what they chose. But then we introduced an ultra low risk and lower return portfolio and saw what happened. We saw that many people switched over to the low risk 
low return options. So you would think, ah, okay, so, so people just prefer more low risk, low, low, uh, low reward options. They're, they're okay with that. So then we introduced an ultra high risk, ultra high reward portfolio. And many people then switched, over half switched to the higher risk, higher reward portfolios. So what does this show? It shows that we're guilty of shallow thinking. It shows that in the case of something like our personal finance, where maybe we're overwhelmed, maybe we're scared of making the wrong choice, instead of making a bold decision, we let ourselves be influenced by the environment around us. So what I'm, I'm not suggesting that you necessarily take on an aggressive portfolio. What I am suggesting is that you overcome your fear of making a mistake and take a bold stance and an active role in these different factors in your life. But let's understand there might be yet another cognitive bias that's impacting and influencing these choices that you're making. It's very helpful to understand these hidden forces so that you can take more control. So one of the things that we learn from behavioral economics is that we tend to be risk averse that we prefer a sure thing to a chance at something better. But ironically, one of the times when we will actually gamble is in order to avoid a loss. And this might be because we feel the pain of a loss twice as much as we feel the joy of a gain. There's another impact on our risk taking, and that's our age. So for those of you in the room who are under the age of 25, your brains are not fully developed yet when it comes to understanding risk. You don't perceive it very well, <laughs> you don't assess it very well, and you don't react to it very well. And it's because of this, we think that it's the number one leading cause of death among young drivers, car accidents. And as a society, we've tried many things to make young drivers safer. We've shown them mangled cars, we've told them the stories of survivors, but nothing has changed their perception of risk. So even things like manufacturing innovations and technology have made cars safer, but they haven't made the driver safer. So BE Works, we've come up with a big idea we're using the power of loss aversion to help drivers change their behavior. It works like this. They still pay the same high premium, but a portion of that premium is reserved into a special account. And for that term, so long as they have no moving violations, at the end of the term, they'll be entitled to get this reward back. But if they have any moving violations, a speeding ticket, they roll through a stop sign, they lose it, and they're out of this program. And that's why it's called One Chance. So we believe that by using a nudge, not by trying to change their perception of risk, which has been hard to do, but instead, by using this power of loss aversion to change behavior that will be able to save lives. So now that you have an understanding of the difficulty that we have. Nature doesn't give us a calculator that is predictably useful to help us to understand risks and opportunities. So what can we do? We have to go against our nature. When you are risk averse, ask yourself, is it because of your personality you can stretch past that comfort zone? Is it because of the external environment that's influencing you to not take a chance? Ask yourself that and how you can go beyond it. Is it your age that is prohibiting you from, from making a right decision to being too risky? Are you being thoughtless? These are different tools that you can have. Ask yourself these questions to be reflective. I'd like to share with you a bold decision that I made. About two years ago, I was presented with the opportunity to, to build BE Works, and it's this amazing behavioral sciences company. But 
on the surface of it, it didn't seem like a very good decision. I'm much older than the little girl that I was. I have a little girl. I have so much at stake. I, I have a mortgage. There's a lot going on in my life that at this stage to, to throw away a long career for a startup, there's, there's a great amount of risk in that. Plus, I was comfortable. I really enjoyed the job that I had. I was working with great people, having a lot of fun, people that I admired. How could I leave that behind in order to do something completely new? But I wanted to make sure that I didn't just make that decision out of hand, that I didn't just say no. What could I do? Well, I decided to put together a decision aid, you know, weighing the pros and cons in a nice spreadsheet, and it was very long, and I shared it with friends and family and mentors, and they all gave me some feedback, and I shared it with people that I don't know very well and a few that I actually don't like that well, but they were very good for objective feedback. But along the way, what I realized was this was actually an introspection aid. I realized that I had forgotten my personality. I had been taking bold chances throughout my life, and I had become nine to five bold. I was helping the bank to take jumps. I was helping the bank to be innovative, nine to five. But I had lost track of who I was. So that decision aid became an introspection aid to help me to recognize what the biases were, that I had become more risk adverse. I didn't have all of the answers in my spreadsheet. I was exhausted going through this process. But in the end, by recognizing these biases as best I could and how they were influencing my decision making, I realized that it was time for me to jump ship. And here I am with you today, very bravely, very bolding, standing on this red circle, sharing this story with you. What I'd like to say is my dream is for our society to recognize that our greatest threat isn't sharks. Our greatest threat is our biases. These are the things that are preventing us from jumping into the ocean for our trophies. So I'd like to give you a nudge. On your birthday, every single year for the rest of your life, I want you to ask yourself and your loved ones this question. What bold choices have you made? Thank you.